Today I got to sit down with owner of the Village Artisans Gallery, PJ Hainman, and get to talk to her about the work that she carries as well as how to approach a gallery where you want to sell your work. Okay, hi, my name is PJ Hayman and I own the Village Artisans Gallery. In, on April 1st we'll be celebrating our 18th anniversary. I open up uh, on April 1st, 1995 with the thought that I was going to be able to produce my stained glass work above ground instead of in my dungeon downstairs and also sell some work uh, on the side. Um, I've always been an admirer of fine crafts and art and there are so many wonderful craftspeople out here in Pennsylvania and also other parts of the country that I would really like to represent and bring their work to the public to be able to enjoy and purchase, of course. Um, I have my studio and two other studios here in the gallery, one of which is Gay Foltz's uh, studio. She's a folk art carver and she's still with me. The other studio, uh, he left after about a year because it just wasn't working out for him and it was really just in time because I needed more room uh, to be able to display all the um, the crafts, the fine crafts and the artwork that I was able to, or actually that I wanted to put in here. Um, after about oh, three to six months, I don't really remember the exact time frame, I figured out that I could not produce my stained glass and also run a gallery and do justice to both. It was one or the other. and. I mean, and I really enjoy interacting with the public. Um, I decided the gallery was going to be the, the part that won out. So um, I started out um, in 95 with about 50 craftspeople and artists from the area, having been a member of the Pennsylvania Guild of Craftsmen since about 1979, I think. Um, and, <coughs> excuse me, I knew quite a few artists and craftspeople and uh, they knew me so when I asked them if they would mind or would they like to uh, put their work here in the gallery um, most of them said yeah they'd like to do that and give it a try. Uh, it always helps when you have a personal relationship with somebody. They, they, they felt like they could trust me to take care of their work and I feel that's really an important part of representing artists uh, is that they should be able to trust you. You have to pay them on time, uh, do whatever you can to promote their work and I also like having them help me do that by providing me with materials uh, that tell about their work, um, little cards that I can hand out with their pieces when I sell them so that the person buying it knows that it was made by an actual artist from the United States instead of being from somewhere else. Um, that's about all I can think of right now. Cool. Uh, so I think it's really wonderful that you have such a great gallery and been able to keep it running in a very small town. Uh -huh. So what are some of the ways, especially because you didn't initially intend on running a gallery and running a business, that you went about starting and promoting a business to build it up to what it is today? Okay, well, uh, obviously that's a problem and uh, that it takes money generally to be able to promote yourself. But um, I tried coming up with stories that I could bring to the newspaper uh, and uh, of course when we opened up the, the Sentinel was kind enough to place a nice article about us in the, in the paper which brought in people and then also I think I'm very fortunate in that Boiling Springs is one of those little communities that really is a tourist attraction. Uh, the Boiling Springs Tavern has uh, a large clientele that comes from all over the area and Allenberry Resort and Playhouse, the same thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of the reasons I felt fairly comfortable in starting this whole business. I knew there was a potential here in this town too. So I uh, went and talked to the tavern and to Allenberry and the tavern was kind enough to let me put my uh, brochures in there um, and the same with Allenberry and then um, 
Oh, a few months into being open, Jane Hines uh, came over and said, you know, we need to be able to let people know about you. Uh, why don't you have some artists come in and then we can tell our, our clients that uh, they're here and you can promote that. And I said, you know, that's a great idea. Then that's what started the Artist in Action series, which I now uh, well, actually always have done in conjunction with Alan Berry's Murder Mystery Weekends. They have their guests there uh, that have free time on Saturday afternoons. And so I have a brochure that I put together. They hand it out. And uh, Jane Hines in the beginning, and she still does, but she's not around as much as she used to be. Uh, she would tell everybody that they have to come over here. <laughs> I mean, literally, she said, you've just got to go over there. And uh, and they did. And mm -hmm. I've had uh, customers from over there, or their guests from over there, that come, they've come for, well, they've been coming there as long as I've been here. Mm -hmm. And they come back every year, you know, that we're part of their thing. Then um, the other thing that I um, got involved with was the Visitors Bureau. The, um, I tried, uh, when we first started, there was a um, Visitors Bureau that was for the Hershey Harrisburg and this area also. And then at some point, Cumberland Valley, uh, the Cumberland County decided to go on to their own and create their own Visitors Bureau. And I was um, involved with that. Mm -hmm. um, and they're a wonderful way of promoting your business. You know, you just work with them. They say you're here, and right. it all works out very nicely. Then, of course, my Facebook came along, and the email newsletters. Uh, I used to send out postcards. And I mean, when I think back about the change between what it took to put an ad in the Sentinel mm -hmm. versus what it takes now, I mean, it's amazing. You know, it's uh, you can produce so much more publicity, advertising, whatever is needed in such a short time. Uh, on the other hand, it also takes a lot more time. But yes, you kind of get both worlds because it's yes. it's it's instant and it's easier, but there's also so much of more. it. So you have to find a way to get people to see you and choose yes. you as opposed to everything else right. that is. Yeah flying at them. Do yeah. you, uh, with so many free avenues for advertising, mm -hmm. do you still do very much paid advertising or have you more switched over to well, not uh, so much? Publicity and uh, that, I try to do that as much as possible, of course. Mm -hmm. But no, I do do advertising. You know, there are venues uh, of advertising that I feel are really do help. They, mm -hmm. you know, there's a certain clientele that I'm trying to attract. I, you know, I, this gallery uh, really likes to promote what I would call fine craft as opposed to um, the more country type craft, although some of that is very nice. It's not a matter of being nice or not being nice, it's a different style of craft. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm looking at the person who would, the customer who would like to buy that. You know who's not who's looking for a really nice oil painting or a piece of enameling or a nice piece of handmade clothing um, carvings um, turned wooden bowls blown glass those kind of things that's that's what I want to promote and I also want to try and promote that as much uh, from the local artists as I can mm -hmm. cool um, so as we're talking about what type of client you get, one of my personal passions is trying to get more young people yeah. involved in the arts, going to see it, buying it, making it. Um, I know as someone who does craft shows, a lot of times I am predominantly younger than most of the other people at the shows. Um, and even as a member of the Yellow Breaches Guild. Now, we're getting younger people, mm -hmm. but that's that's kind of slowly happening. Are there any things that you're doing in the gallery that you think is helping to bring younger people in or how you're trying to figure out how to get 
the new younger generation through your doors? Mm, well, it's a toughie, but uh, it's by bringing in more contemporary work, more, um, um, yeah, what's the word we're looking for? Uh, not as fussy kind of work, uh, a little bit more colorful, uh, more stylized perhaps, uh, but but something with a different look, not that old to tra traditional type work. Um, so hopefully, you know, that's what the younger generation is looking for. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that's, it's, it's always a hard crowd to, <laughs> to figure out, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, the, the paper cut pieces also, they're kind of graphic to me. Yes. Uh, yeah. Which is, is definitely interesting because the younger group is very into anything on the anything mm -hmm. on the computer. Right. Um, so now we've kind of talked about the business end of things, but I also think it's really important in figuring out, as an artist, how do you approach a gallery and how do you do it in a really professional way so that, mm -hmm. that both people have a good experience at the end of the process, yeah. no matter what the, what the end result is. So if someone, especially brand new, so an mm -hmm. artist that is not represented at any gallery is looking at you and thinking, oh, I would love to have my work in the Village Artisans Gallery. Mm -hmm. um, how do you prefer to be approached? And what do you, you know, what, what do you like them to have with them? Okay, well, first of all, i got to tell you that I think every gallery has their own preferences. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do is to either call or email. I like email because then I can think a little bit about what's being said and what somebody wants to know, Get, send me an email, tell me about yourself, make sure you have your contact information in there besides just the, your email, mm -hmm. um, where you're from, uh, what type of work you do, if possible send me some uh, images, it doesn't have to be a whole lot, but just so I have an idea of what I can expect you to be bringing in. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a website, that would be wonderful. Um, you know, send me to the website. Uh, a lot of people have uh, Etsy um, sites. Um, I'm having a heck of a time with Etsy. You know, yeah. It is difficult to find people on Etsy. At least I have trouble finding people. It on is Etsy. unless they give you their exact link. It is challenging because there are so many people on Etsy mm -hmm. that it is. It gets a little bit yes. crazy. So you have yeah. to send. I find it helpful if you send the the exact shop link and not sometimes not even just your name, because mm -hmm. a lot of times if you add a space and there's not supposed to be a space or a capital, mm -hmm. like you you get lost in it's, the. Yes, and then sometimes my computer just will not cooperate and does strange things when I go on to Etsy. So it's better not to send me there. Now other people may not have that problem, but you know, I, I just assume to get a picture or a website or something else or a Facebook page, that's fine too. Um, then uh, if the work looks like something that I think would work in here, and by saying it would work in here, it could be the most beautiful and well-crafted um, work, but it isn't uh, the look, the style, whatever, that I think fits in, uh, that my customers are looking for. Um, so um, when I say that, no or thank you, but uh, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with your work, that it just means that uh, it just doesn't fit in here, and by fit I also mean I don't have room. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, we have a lot of things in here, and uh, there's no sense in me taking on duplicates uh, because that's not any doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help the person whose work I already have here that's similar enough to yours that you know both of you would lose out. Um, and fit. yeah, well the, yes, the the fit part, you know the. I need the space. There's no sense in me getting something in there if I have to cram it in a little corner somewhere. Nobody's going to see your work. So we need to be able to display it properly. Uh, so I may not be able to accommodate it at this time, but you know, maybe some future time I might be able to. Uh, or there may just be too much of a similar kind of work. So. Mm -hmm. um, 
do you find that you appreciate it? So, you know, if I was approaching you and I first looked you up on the internet and found mm -hmm. out that you have Aaron Keck clocks and said, you know, I looked you up, I see you carry Aaron Keck clocks, I make you know, scarves that are steampunk in style as well, and since you carry her work, I feel like my style might fit. Does that, you know, does that maybe warm you up a little bit or or find that you, you really appreciate it because you realize that the person actually researched you and it's not like they're sending this copy and paste email that they also maybe sent to 50 other mm -hmm. galleries? Well, um, I guess yes and no. In a way, you know, uh, when somebody says, well, and I appreciate the fact that they look to see whether or not they think their work will fit in there. Um, but it almost makes it a little bit harder the way you phrase that to say uh, no. Right. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's just, uh, oh, how, how can I, uh, by, by saying, well, since you have this work, mm -hmm. you should. Right. So it makes it harder for you to figure out how to respond. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> so we made your job easier and harder all of the, the same, same time. time. Well, I think if, if you're going to uh, approach a gallery, you really should take a look to see what the work is that's in there. Mm -hmm. You know, because, I mean, you should be able to tell the, uh, whether or not the work at least looks like it might fit in. Um, I mean, there's no sense in coming in with, oh, I can't even think of, well, crochet doilies, you know, it just isn't something that I carry. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no sense in approaching me about that. So once you've, you know, had the email conversation with a person and you've responded, yes, I'm interested in seeing your work, mm -hmm. uh, when they show up to your gallery, what what all do you want them to have in their hands with them when they come and see you for the first time? Okay. Um, I would like to have the work um, clean, neat. Uh, if Like if it's jewelry, bring it in on some jewelry trays or some place so that it, it's well displayed so that I can get a good look at the whole thing instead of having to pull it out of the plastic baggie and see what the, the pieces are. Uh, be able to tell me what the materials are, uh, how you make the things, um, and have a pretty good idea about your pricing. Uh, I'm constantly being asked to price things for artists, which is very difficult. Um, yeah. I have a, a fair idea about the amount of work and the costs, maybe, <laughs> uh, of the materials but and the, the time involved and all that, but I don't really know. So you should have an idea of um, the amount of time you have to spend making it, uh, gathering your materials, um, your overhead in producing the materials, uh, in producing the work, um, so that you can price your things um, fairly. Mm -hmm. um, now, if I, if you come to me with, and, and you're way out of line either way, I can tell you, I think you ought to either lower or Gee, you know, this work is worth more than that. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't underprice yourself, but at the same time, you know, you can't sell like Picasso on your first <laughs> time out. I mean, you got to be reasonable about right, right. pricing. And I always feel it's much better to start too low, if anything, mm -hmm. and work your way up than the other way. Right. Once you establish your price, you really shouldn't discount it unless there's a reason. I mean, there's no... No reason not to give a a better price to a friend, you know, or something like right, that. Right, but you don't want to have to totally go backwards with no. all your prices because that's normally... You don't want to do that. I mean, it, you know, when the person that bought it at the higher price finds out that you're now selling it at this lower price, they get annoyed. Right, right. You know, they don't like that. That um, brings me to the question of commission. Mm -hmm. I I think a lot of people, when they find out especially even my students, when they find out that galleries take commission in the beginning, which most are taking between like 40 and 50% mm -hmm. are like, Whoa, Whoa. you know, oh my gosh. Um, 
but from someone who does does craft shows when you look at it in that aspect it really mm -hmm. isn't that bad because a craft show there's a potential that before I've made a dime I've spent like five six seven hundred dollars and mm -hmm. that money has been spent and there's the the full potential that I could sell absolutely nothing and just yes. have lost seven hundred dollars as well as my entire weekend mm -hmm. um, so when you put it in that perspective which I think is important for people to do, uh, the commission that galleries <laughs> take is not quite as bad anymore. No. Um, so tell us a little bit about the commission that you take and then sort of what that goes into so that people are, are getting a better grasp of no, you're not, you know, you're not ripping them off. You're not getting <laughs> rich off of them. That it's, it's, well, it's an essential part of actually running the space. Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. Um, I take a 40% commission. Uh, actually, that's the low end. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the reason I can get away with that is because we are in a um, lower priced area here. I mean, as far as all... The costs associated with running a, a gallery—it's—it's it's not like New York City, you know. Yeah. So I can, I, yeah, you know, I, I feel I don't want to charge any more than I absolutely have to, um, but I have to pay the mortgage, I've got to pay the electric bill, I've got to pay the heating bill, I've got to pay the insurance and the advertising, and um, every year. Um, I, I'm just doing this off the top of my head now, but I right. spend about ten thousand dollars a year in advertising. Wow. Uh, my insurance costs are two to three thousand dollars for the building, and then because I have part-time help, I have to have workman's comp insurance, mm -hmm. which is another thousand um, dollars. My electric bill runs, depending on the season, around two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars a month. Um, my heating uh, oil, I spend about three to four thousand dollars a year on. Um, my the packaging, I buy boxes and paper, um, so I have to buy those, and that probably comes to between two and three thousand dollars a year. But I feel like it's an important part of what we have here so we can compete with the big box stores. Oh, yeah. Service, you know, to me is really important. And we, if somebody needs a gift box, we put it in the gift box. Um, there's other, you know, I can't Well, there's think you. Of there's yeah. even just, you know, people are, are paying for, for you, oh, um, for you working here, for mm. your brain. Um, you know, if I'm selling my own stuff, I'm it's it's my own time, my own energy. Mm -hmm. Where you know you're you're having an, you're having events here, you're putting out advertising right. campaigns, you're mm -hmm. figuring out where your client is, you're my talking client. to clients, you're yeah. educated about everything that's here. Mm -hmm. um, that in of itself is worth a lot. Well, then the other thing too is customers can come here five days a week from 10 in the morning till 6 at night and buy your work right. instead of having to go to a show once or twice a year and not seeing you there. Right. So, you know, I think that's worth something too. Mm -hmm. um, along the lines of paying, uh, Jason Lyons talked about this a little bit when he was talking about approaching galleries, but I think mm -hmm. it's so important that I want to touch it on again. Um, when you were talking about artists coming up with their pricing for things and discounting things mm -hmm. different places, um, kind of your expectations for, you know, h how pieces are priced and that the artist is pricing the same place everywhere or how it works oh, if they decide yeah. to run a sale, kind of mm -hmm. how, how you address that and what you expect from the people that have their work here. You mean uh, having pricing on the same yes. level. Yes. I yes. I, I expect you know, especially artists in the area or artists that come to the local shows, I don't expect to be undercut. Uh, I think it creates hard feelings. Mm -hmm. Uh not on my part necessarily, but on the customer's part. You know, and then if they come in 
and see something priced higher here than the artist is selling it for, they're not going to come back here. They're not going to come back and buy your work here. So I'm sitting with merchandise on the shelf that's not moving. Right. Not only that, I also feel like I'm making my 40, well, I'm not making 40%, but I'm getting my 40% uh, to cover my costs and everything. That You should be getting that same amount because mm -hmm. you should be selling at a retail price. Mm -hmm. And again, it doesn't mean that you can't give your friend a discount, but don't undercut the gallery because it just uh, is not... It just isn't good business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, and you know, even reminding yourself if you're not giving the gallery owner the 40%, you should still need that 40% because now you're paying for your own marketing, your own, like, yes. you're you're hurting yourself as well, not only as, as sort of the message you're sending out mm -hmm. um, that seems a little dishonest or confusing, but you're actually hurting yourself as well because exactly. if your pricing is somewhat accurate, you should actually need that 40% to right. be to be promoting yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I know